ever hear from God and then it doesn't go well, and then you wonder if you heard if you actually heard from God. Yeah, when I when I started uh, really pressing into the gift of prophecy and and hearing from God, um, I, I think I think it's a little different when like when how I used to view prayer was throwing requests up to God versus I think the kind of praying that we're talking about is actually more listening. Uh, and so as I started listening and inviting the Lord to speak about the people that were around me and engaging, I had this word for this lady in a supermarket and, um, I felt like someone was really sick and and needed help or, you know, was needing comfort. And so I said, is there someone, you know, I know this might sound really strange to you, um, <laughs> but here, and I gave the word and she's like, oh no, you know, and she just looks, you know, <laughs> she just looks at me and I'm like, well, call the know. security guard in the front of the yeah. store over, please. Yep. Um, and so I'm like, well, I guess I, I guess I missed it. And, um, and then, uh, I went out to the parking lot. I actually happened to be parked by this lady and I overheard, <laughs> I overheard her and she didn't have it, but it come, come to find out, like, I, I think it was her sister or her brother, someone in her family actually had what I was picking up on and, yeah. um, or what the Lord was sharing with me. You wonder if she if she had a sense that God was concerned about her family member after that, or if she thought she just ran into a kooky person exactly. at the supermarket, who knows? Huh? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's read first Corinthians, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies uh, the church. Once, once uh, we went to the vineyard and we got invited on the leadership team in 2012, um, the Lord really started reemerging this gift uh, that he had given me. And I, I started having a desire to pray for people and uh, to minister God's love to them. But I didn't really know how to do it. And, and then we went to the Anaheim Vineyard, uh, the, re the national conference in 2013. And we drove our sportsmobile down. And before and one of the sessions, Petty Putman, who uh, started the School of Kingdom Ministry, he mm -hmm. came out and he's like, if, and we were sitting right by where he came out, if anyone wants to learn how to pray for people, follow me. And so I'm like, Tim, I got to go. And so, mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I went and followed him and he taught us the five-step prayer model. And he taught us like how to see when the Holy Spirit is on someone and the different types of words of knowledge and how we might actually be experiencing God speak to us, um, you know, through seeing, feeling hearing and knowing and how we usually have a particular one that is more strong than the other and how to lean in and press into that. And so that, that was just really cool. And I was like, okay. Um, when you heard that, were you thinking that feeling was one of the main ways you heard from God, just based on what you said before, where you're, where you're feeling stuff from people or whatever? I didn't really, at that time, I hadn't understood that some of the, like, uh, the feelings that I would get weren't actually my own feelings. Okay. I just thought that I was highly emotional. I've been told my whole life I'm very emotional and I'm just can be all over the map. Um, and so afterwards, through this process of learning, all of a sudden the Lord showed me, it's like, these aren't always your feelings. Even um, so, emotions, when I'm talking about feelings, it's in both emotion emotions and physical. So I will actually physically feel other people's pain. Okay. So let's walk through that. Um, you feel pain when you're around somebody. And at this point, you're thinking, this, this is just my body being weird. But you're thinking maybe the Lord is communicating. Uh, this is a form of prophecy, hearing from God and sharing it with someone else. Yep. Um, and I like I like what Paul says here, that the maybe we know if it's if it's a prophecy, if it's helping strengthen someone, encourage someone, or if they're having a hard time to comfort someone, where do you go from there? So you feel something, you're realizing it's not just, you know, you being weird or emotional, but that maybe God's actually speaking to you. So what do you do then? 
it was such a process because at that time I wasn't really around, you know, I had the initial training, but I wasn't around people who maybe under uh, understood or knew what I didn't know what to do okay. with it. It's like, so if I'm driving in a car and my arm starts hurting, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, I can't really share it. Or, or if you're in a crowd of people, how do you know which person it's for? Right. Like there, there's, if there's 50 people, which person is it? You get up on right. a chair and say, whose shoulders hurting? You know, it's like, right. or you look at every person and see if they're like favoring their shoulder or something. like Yeah. That. It, I mean, and sometimes, yeah, that's, that's the case, but other times it's just uh, about, you know, um, and so learning how to discern that has been quite the process and, and so don't um, think like in some vineyard services and, uh, and I, I, part of me wishes we did this more, maybe we should, that you're, you're feeling something, you know, it's, you don't think it's for yourself because it came out of nowhere. And so we, it's like, we don't know who it is. And I, it's, to me, this is John Wimber. You just say, Hey, by the way, is somebody here have a pain in their right shoulder? And then someone's like, yeah. And then he said, okay, well, uh, Lisa's got that pain. So Lisa, uh, why don't you guys go pray? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, amazing. We, we saw some amazing things happen just from, just from putting it up, putting it out there. So mm -hmm. we were having a prayer time and in, in the middle of it, my arms just started throbbing. And at this point I hadn't prayed for anyone for healing or given the word. And I'm like, this is happening. And so Tom was like, does, is anyone in the room having this feeling? And everybody's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. You know, whatever. Okay. Even in the vineyard, you're the unusual one. I, <laughs> <laughs> yes. but Tom, You're supposed to be safe amongst the freaks in the vineyard. <laughs> but Tom, bless his heart. He was like determined to figure it out. And there was mm. some people in the sanctuary doing some worship practice. So he goes out there and he's like, is anyone's arms hurting? And the drummer was like, yeah, actually me, I, I overweeded and my arms are throbbing. And, and so like he brought him in and we all prayed for healing for his arms and his, his pain completely like mm. lifted. And he was so like astounded. Mm.